sissyblitz.com. My name is Navdeep Suri. I'm India's ambassador to UAE, but more important, I'm uh, the grandson of the novelist Nanak Singh, who was a survivor of the Jallianwala Bagh massacre. I'm here at JLF at the British Library to speak about his uh, classic work, Khuni Visakhi, um, which is available on Amazon and other uh, outlets. And it's a pleasure to be here with Desi Blitz. I've spent my first 22 years in Amritsar, um, the first um, eight or nine in the old city, very close to the Golden Temple. Uh, grew up in an area called Gali Punjab Singh. Um, and then my dad made a little bit of money and we uh, built a new house um, outside the walled city in an area called Green Avenue. Um, so went to school in Amritsar, went to college in Amritsar, went to university in Amritsar. Um, spent my first 22 years there and so even today, very much rooted there because my parents are still there, my mom and dad are still there. You know, some of my most amazing memories um, were going to a village which is Preet Nagar, uh, kind of halfway between Amritsar and Lahore. And um, it, was, it came up in the 1930s as this very utopian uh, commune for writers and intellectuals and those who want to change society. Um, and uh, my grandfather was one of the founders of Preet Nagar. Uh, and every summer holidays, we'd go uh, to uh, Preet Nagar, and the extended family, all the uncles and aunts and cousins would get together. And we'd have a merry time through the day, but the evenings were special because we'd all um, gather around my grandfather and uh, we'd persuade him to tell us a story or two. And it was quite amazing how um, he could come down to the level of kids uh, and join them and just weave an amazing yarn. I've traveled uh, in diff around the world. I was here in London. I was in Washington when his uh, centenary was being celebrated. And I remember special events in places like San Francisco and uh, Chicago and uh, Washington itself. Um, and meeting so many people from the Indian community, particularly the Punjabi diaspora, who'd say they'd learned Punjabi from reading his novels or to read his novels. And that was really a humbling experience for me because, you know, sometimes growing up in the family, you kind of take it for granted that, yes, he was a great man, but he was your grandfather. Uh, but then to hear the adulation from people that you've never met, and who are being nice to you only because you're his grandson. <laughs> I think that the first one that I tried uh, my hand on was Pavitra Papi, and the second was Ad And um, I chose those two books because previous to that, I'd tried my hand at a novel called Chitalahu, which is one of his most famous novels. And I realized that I just wasn't equipped intellectually to take on that challenge because Chittalahu was set in a very rural context and it had very earthy characters. Um, so you have this uh, Afimji, an opium addict in the village, um, who uh, everything that he says, he uses a proverb uh, from Punjabi, rooted in Punjabi uh, culture, to uh, explain his point. And you have a, a Granthi, uh, the uh, priest of the uh, village Gurdwara, and, uh, uh, who is a bad guy. And he uses a quote from Guru Granth Sahib to justify every evil act that he does. And when I tried my hand at it, I said, no, I can't do justice to it because I don't know enough Gurbani, and I don't know enough, sometimes, to try and explain those metaphors or those uh, idioms uh, would be lost. And so the two books that I did translate were closer to my own urban setting, where I have a higher comfort level with the context of 
the language rather than um, rural Punjab where genuinely the, uh, the vocabulary can be quite intimidating uh, in terms of efforts to translate it. So I, yeah, I think that both the watchmaker and the uh, the, the, the uh, life incomplete uh, stood up to my test that I was trying to meet these two objectives that can you uh, maintain fidelity to the authentic, original, be authentic to the original, and still be readable in the new, uh, and not sound like it's a translation or not sound like it's too labored. This was a different kind of challenge because um, Khuni Visakhi is a poem and translating poetry is very, very different from translating prose. Uh, those two were novels and here I was trying to grapple with the um, challenge of rhyme and meter and trying to preserve the original cadence of the poem. And poems are meant to be read aloud. Uh, and, and so uh, can you keep that cadence of reading it loud as it was in the original Punjabi. Here it is, you know, the second and fourth line, second, fourth, sixth, eight lines, they rhyme. And so I wanted to preserve that, uh, that, that, that scale. Um, and sometimes you have to innovate a little bit with devices that will enable you to do that because the restrictions of vocabulary otherwise are just much too strong. Um, but in addition to the translation, I was also trying to provide some context. So I've contributed a preface where I've kind of explained my challenges as a translator. Uh, and then I've written a longish essay called The Book, The Bag, and Our Bauji, uh, where my effort was really to convey our relationship with uh, Kuni Visaki, a book that was written 100 years back um, banned by the British, lost to the family, found again after 60 years, all of that. Um, and uh, um, my relationship or what we knew of our grandfather and so on. So what it means to me has actually evolved through the process of working on this book. And what it's taught me is how much of our history and our heritage we take for granted, how complacent we are about preserving it, um, how sad it is that the Golden Temple gets millions of pilgrims, but only a minuscule fraction of them stop over at Jalayamala Bagh, which is just 100 yards before the Golden Temple. Um, and I feel, after having done this, uh, that Jalayamada Bagh should be almost as important a place of pilgrimage um, as the Golden Temple is. Uh, if you don't salute those who gave up their lives for you, then you are a lesser people. If you forget your own history, you're a lesser people. And I think we need to take pride in that part of our heritage. Uh, and so, uh, you know, after all, the importance of Jalayam al-Bagh, if you look at it, that this is the event, this was the milestone that marked the downfall of the British Empire. This was the event that turned Mahatma Gandhi, who wasn't yet a Mahatma, uh, from somebody who was still a British loyalist to a staunch nationalist. This is the event that made Rabindranath Tagore renounce his knighthood uh, and write an epic letter to the, uh, to the British saying why he's renouncing the knighthood that the British had uh, awarded him. And I think all of those milestones, we just take them for granted. Uh, so I think, yeah, to me, uh, it was the process of translating this uh, poem and writing it and researching some of the stuff was also a little bit of a voyage of self-discovery. This is on the 13th of April uh, that uh, the um, uh, people have gathered in Jalayamala Bagh. Um, 5.30 sharp, the clock had struck. Thousands gathered in the Bagh, my friends. 
leaders came to lament the nation's woes, taking turns to speak out loud, my friends. Voiced grievance, hardship, anger, sorrow, saying, no one listens to us, my friends. What can we do? What options left? Can't see any ray of light, my friends. Those words forlorn they barely voiced came soldiers thundering down, my friends. At Dyer's command, those Gurkha troops gathered in a formation tight, my friends. Under tyrant's orders, they opened fire straight into innocent hearts, my friends. And fire and fire and fire they did. Some thousands of bullets were shot, my friends. Like searing hail, they felled our youth, a tempest not seen before, my friends. Riddled chests and bodies slid to the ground, each one a target large, my friends. Haunting cries for help did rend the sky. Smoke rose from smoldering guns, my friends. Just a sip of water was all they sought. Valiant youth lay dying in the dust, my friends. That narrow lane to enter the bog, sealed off on Dyer's command, my friends. No exit, no escape, no way out was left, making bog a deathly trap, my friends. A fortunate few somehow survived, while most died then and there, my friends. Some ran with bullets ripping their chest, stumbling to their painful end, my friends. Others caught the bullet while running away, dropping lifeless in awkward heaps, my friends. In minutes, the bog so strewn with corpses, none knew just who was who, my friends. Many of them did look like Sikhs, among Hindus and Muslims plenty, my friends. In prime of their youth, our brave hearts lay, gasping for one last breath, my friends. Long hair lay matted in blood and grime. In slumber deep, they sleep, my friends. Says Nanak Singh, who knows their state, but God, the one and only, my friends. Yeah, so I think it has two important aspects. One is the raw imagery of the, um, of the poem. It's very visual. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's quite remarkable that my grandfather, who went on to become a very famous writer, was only 22 at the time of Khuni Visaki at the time of the Jallianwala Bagh massacre. And as a 22-year-old, with very little formal education, he wrote this powerful account, which is not just a poem, but it's also a work of contemporary history. Uh, and I've subsequently looked at some of the really detailed research that has gone into Jallianwala Bagh in the context of the centenary. And validate the historicity of the sequence of events that's narrated in Khuni Visaki, that yes, Gandhi ji had given a call for Satyagraha for a hartal on the 30th of March, 6th of April, most cities in India, including Amritsar, observed the general strike. 9th of April was Ram Naomi in Amritsar and the Hindus and Muslims and Sikhs got together to celebrate that. The whole thing about Dr. Saifuddin Kichlu and uh, Dr. Satya Pala as the two stalwarts from Amritsar leading the Ram Nami celebrations and then being arrested and so on. Uh, the massacre itself on the 13th of April and its aftermath. Uh, so there's a lot that is captured in the space of some 4,000 words. Uh, and so it's, it's quite a remarkable, uh, not just as a piece of literature, but, uh, you know, as... Uh, as an eyewitness's account, as a survivor's account, as, as somebody who was there and um, wrote about it with such passion. I think it would be grossly incorrect to think that it was uh, even predominantly a Sikh event. Um, uh, first of all, I think we should look at it as an event that is integral to India's freedom struggle. Second, we should remember the Sikhs were a minority in Amritsar. Uh, there were more Muslims uh, than Sikhs in Amritsar in uh, 1919. 
uh, six according to some reports that I've seen were barely about 25% of the population. Um, so I, I, I think we shouldn't overcook uh, the, the religious aspect, except for what I mentioned uh, and what, uh, what, what uh, the poem so beautifully captures is the spirit of nationalism that cut, cut across religious lines. And because the Raj had such a strong divide and rule policy, I mean, they ruled India for the period that they did by dividing Indians and getting them, uh, setting them off against each other. Uh, and how they got spooked by the fact that there was this remarkable show of communal amity uh, on uh, Ram Naomi that uh, spooked enough to arrest the leaders for no charges except that they thought it was suspicious that why are Muslims and Hindus and Sikhs getting together? They must be, they must be cooking up something. Well, let me say that it isn't enough because we still don't have a proper memorial to them Singh in Sunan. Uh, but it's a lot better than where we were uh, when he uh, avenged uh, the Jallianwala Bagh tragedy in 1940. Um, remember that it wasn't until 74 uh, that his uh, remains were brought back to India and he was given a proper ceremonial reception by Mrs. Gandhi as the Prime Minister of India, by uh, leaders who received the remains at the airport and so on. Uh, and uh, his formal cremation uh, of the remains. So I think belatedly there was um, uh, respect uh, given, but I just feel very strongly that um, what the centenary has done of Jalayamala Bagh is it's given us an opportunity uh, to rediscover our heroes, uh, whether it is Shahid Udham Singh, whether it is uh, Sir Bhagat Singh, um, whether it is people like my grandfather who um, chose to wield the pen uh, instead of a gun and uh, express themselves differently.